Thanks, Bart. By the way, I had a letter from Doc Martin down in San Diego the other you day. Got you got what you came for. Now get out, Goose. Sure, sure. Bart, I'll be seeing you. That makes almost 10,000 you've handed over to that guy, Bart. I've been cowed, Lou. So how long is this going to go on? The guy's bleeding you white. That's his last dime. He's had it. So what have you been waiting for? Waiting for Sheriff Wheeler to take that trip he's been talking about for the last year. What's that? What'll I do? I'd leave Harry Fife to take care of the law around here, and he's not nearly as smart as Wheeler. Well, here's something you can do for me. Make a long-distance phone call, but not from here. There's a the name and number. Who's Dan Adams? A private detective who'll come running when he finds out Goose Fenton's in Stone River. What's that? And then? <laughs> Goodbye, Goose. Come on, make that phone call. While you're in town, Mr. Adams. You were seen driving in. The man that seen you called me. His name is... Barton uh, Kincaid. When I heard Goose Fenton was here, I knew Kincaid would be far away. Well, Mr. Kincaid told me all about the trouble he had down in San Diego. All about it? About his business partner, a man named Bannister? Now, when he found that he couldn't steal Bannister's half of the company, he tried to get it by killing him. That uh, murder charge against Mr. Kincaid was dropped, wasn't it? because the most important witness against him disappeared. Fenton? Fenton. Kincaid paid him to get lost. He's probably still paying him to stay that way. Mr. Kincaid told me that you'd probably come up with a story like this. So you don't believe me? That's not the question. And what is? The fact that as far as this town or this state is concerned, Mr. Kincaid is a peaceful, law-abiding citizen. Well, that's a switch. And so is Goose Fenton, for that matter. What happened to either one of them down in California nearly three years ago is none of my business. Would you consider it any of your business that there's a warrant out for Fenton's arrest? Yes, sir. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. He's wanted on an assault charge in San Diego. Now, you can wire the San Diego police and confirm that. Just what's your interest in all this? Charles Bannister was a friend of mine, a very good friend. I want to see the man who murdered him get what's coming to him. Well, I don't see how arresting Fenton on an assault charge is going to accomplish that. Uh, maybe it wouldn't. On the other hand, maybe it would if you'd pick Fenton up and let me talk to him. What about? About whether he wants to go back to San Diego voluntarily and make a statement regarding what he knows of Bannister's death or be extradited and face a prison term on that assault charge. Just a minute now. You haven't got the authority to make a deal like that, Adam. No, but I know that San Diego County would rather use Fenton to convict Kincaid of Bannister's murder than press that assault charge against Fenton. I'll check with San Diego. What about Fenton in the meantime? Nothing. All that I got is your word that he's wanted for anything. And that's not good enough? It's not good enough to pick him up on. Could it be that you want to give Goose Fenton a head start in case he runs again? Now, what do you mean by that crack? I thought I made it pretty plain. If and when you pick up Fenton, you can find me at the hotel. Can I help you? I want to see Barton Kincaid. Well, he's not in. Wait a minute. Where can I find Kincaid? Who are you? My name's Adams, Dan Adams. Evidently, Kincaid's talked to you about me, too. I think you'd better go. You haven't answered my question. Where can I find Kincaid? 
Mr. Kincaid left instructions that if you came here asking a lot of questions, I wasn't to answer them. And if you start any trouble, I was to call the sheriff's office. Kincaid seems to have a lot of friends now at the sheriff's office. Especially one named Harry Fife. Stone River owes Mr. Kincaid a lot, Mr. Adams. He was dying on his feet before he bought the lumber company, reopened the mills and the logging camps. Well, since he's been thrown out of just about every town he was ever in, he finally bought one for himself, huh? Well, that's not going to save him. And you give him that message for me. Bart Kincaid. My secretary tells me that you were out to see me this afternoon. That's right. I wish I'd have been here. I'd like to talk with you. Hey, you know where I am. Well, the trouble is I'm stuck out of my home tonight. I don't suppose you'd want to drop out here to see me. Well, where is your place? I live right at the end of Mill Creek Road. I'm on my way. <laughs> half an hour later. I'd been taken for a ride and left on the country road. My wallet was still in my pocket. My gun was in the shoulder holster. But the gun had been used since I'd last seen it. The smell of cordite was strong and there were two shells missing. Even in my foggy condition, I knew that somebody was building a frame, and I was right in the middle of it. Hold it, Adam. Put up your hands. It's your idea. Get your hands up. Get his gun. Let's go. Go where? I'm taking you in for questioning. About what? Of the murder of Goose Fenton. Oh, so that's it. That's what? You wouldn't understand. Second thought, maybe you would. Now look here, Adams. You're in big trouble. And I got a hunch that when I run a ballistic test on that gun of yours, you're going to be in even more of it. You wouldn't need a ballistic test to prove it was my gun that killed Fenton. Take my word for it, it was. It was lifted off me when I was unconscious, it was used on Fenton, and then it was Look, put I back... Look, I heard here. about all I wanted of this. All right, Fife. Lock me up. That's what I intend to do. <laughs> been framed with as much tender and loving care as any painting hanging in the Louvre in Paris. And there was only one way to break out of the trap, find Bart Kincaid and get the truth out of him. My first stop was Kincaid's office. It was dark, deserted. That left only one place to go, back to Kincaid's house. If he still wasn't there, I'd wait.
I parked the car down the road from the house and made the rest of the trip on foot. Now the house was lighted up like a neon sign. Obviously, Bart Kincaid was home. How did Adams get away? I'll give you the whole story on the phone, Mr. Kincaid. It's all my fault. I just... Mr. Kincaid, are you sure there isn't something more I can do? No, no. I'll see you in the morning at the office. Good night, Mr. Kincaid. Come on to the house. Mr. Fife. Be quiet. You won't get hurt. I just want you to drive me someplace where we can talk. You understand? All right, drive. Where to? Kincaid's office. to get Bart Kincaid away from his house, alone. Why, so you can kill him too? Kincaid killed Goose Fenton, or had him killed. Why would he? Well, if you really want to know, sit down and I'll tell you. But well, come on. Maybe you won't believe everything I'm going to tell you. I'll promise you one thing, I won't bore you. I gave her the story from beginning to end starting with the anonymous phone call I'd received in Coronado telling me Goose Fenton was in Stone River and winding up with how I'd gotten away from Deputy Sheriff Harry Fife. I kept my promise. I hadn't bored her. But whether she believed me or not was another question. I can't believe it. It sounds fantastic. That's the trouble with the truth sometimes. But why would Mr. Kincaid want to kill Goose Fenton? Because Fenton was probably blackmailing Kincaid. I'm sure he was. And Kincaid could never feel really safe as long as he knew I was determined to get Bannister's murder. Oh, well, yes, but... And then he got an inspiration. Kill two birds with one stone. Get me here, murder Fenton, and make it look like I'd done it. Do you think if I killed Goose Fenton, I'd still be here? I'd be trying to get as far away from here just as fast as I could. Yes, I suppose you would. But even if what you're saying is true, it couldn't have been Mr. Kincaid who killed him. How do you know? Because you said that Fenton was killed somewhere between 7 and 8.30, right? According to Fife. Well, Mr. Kincaid was right here in his office from 6 o'clock until after 9, working on some correspondence that had to be in the 10 o'clock mail. All right, Kincaid didn't kill Goose Fenton, but he engineered it. Now, who pulled the trigger? Harry Fife? No. How do you know? Because I've known Harry Fife all my life. Oh, he may not be such a smart man, but he's an honest man, and he is certainly no killer. And besides that, you have somebody else in mind, haven't you? No. I think you have. Now you let go of me. Not until you tell I don't want to be involved in You're this. already involved. Well, uh, there's a man named Bates. Lou Bates? Yes, you know him? By reputation, he was in San Diego for a while. He's supposed to have had a gun for hire. You mean he was a professional killer? That was the story. Now, where can I find him? Well, he's got a house just off Main Street, south of town. Show me. Bring him. 
ring the bell. They ask who it is, answer it, and then go back and wait in the car. I killed him, do you? I didn't even know he was in town until you mentioned his name. You know that's true. But then who? Kincaid. There were two shots fired from my gun. One for Fenton, the other for Bates. Now, Bates killed Fenton so Kincaid would have an alibi. Then Kincaid killed Bates. Why would he? Well, he was probably afraid Bates would pick up the blackmail where Fenton dropped it. And Kincaid probably figured he already had me framed for one murder, so he might as well make it for two, eliminate everybody that knew too much. What are you going to do now? I don't know. You'll have to give yourself up. Oh, not yet. I want to try one more thing. You say you know Harry Fife. Yes. Then will you help me? Do what? I can tell you better after I've made a phone call. to get you out at your house. I thought you said you were stuck out there for the night. Well, what do you want? I want to talk to you. We've got nothing to talk about now, Adams. I think we have. Something your secretary told me about the phone call you made to me inviting me out to your house. Well, what about it? You better come out to Lou Bates' house and find out. Oh, and Kincaid. Yeah? Come along. Fife there. Tell him I want to talk to him. This is Barton Kincaid. You went to a lot of trouble for nothing, Kincaid. There's one item you overlooked. When you telephoned me at my hotel, you said you were home. You weren't. You called from your office. Lois Dixon heard you. So, what difference does that make? Could make a big difference. Oh, it's a small thing. But a small thing can become a big thing when you're trying to pin a murder rap on a man. A frame-up is a very complicated piece of machinery. If every piece doesn't fit just right, it can wreck everything. All right, go on. I'll make a deal with you, Kincaid. You want me off your back about the Bannister case. All right, I'll get off. And Lois Dixon won't say anything about that telephone call you made asking me out to your place tonight. Mm-hmm. What do I have to do for you? 
Get Harry Fife to suddenly discover that it wasn't my gun that was used to kill Fenton and Bates. I don't know about that. Why not? He's your boy, isn't he? All right, it's a deal. Where can I get in touch with you? When I read in the newspapers, I'm no longer wanted for murder. I'll get in touch with you. with you, Adams? You know what's the matter. Fife's out there. You just signaled him with that window shade. He's waiting out there to gun me down the minute I stick my nose out the door. You're crazy. That'd tie it all up in a nice, neat little package, wouldn't it? Fife would say he had to kill me while I was running away, and that'd be that. Get away from the window. Put it on. What for? Put it on. What are you gonna do? Let's talk about what you're gonna do, Kincaid. You're gonna walk out there wearing my hat and coat. Now, just a minute, Adams. Put it on. You can take your chances out there, or you can get it from me right here and now, and I mean it. Now that. Making a big mistake. Move. And hold it right in front of the door. Pipe isn't out there, I swear to it. And you haven't got a thing in the world to worry about, have you? Adam, listen to me. We're all through talking, Kincaid. I told you, you can take your chances out there. You can get it from me right here. You have five seconds to decide. You're bluffing, you wouldn't dare. You'll find out in three seconds. <sighs> all right, Adams, you win. What do you want from me? A signed statement admitting you killed Fenton and Bates and tried to frame me for it. All right, let's go with the desk. Sucker! He's not the only one, Kincaid. Drop the gun. What's the matter with you, Fife? He's your man. I know. You had me convinced of that till I talked to Lois. She was waiting for me outside. Then you knew he was out there before I gave the signal. I didn't know it for sure, but it was a good bet. So I had Lois wait out there for him to try to tell him how much of a patsy you've been making of him. Now give me the gun. I figured I'd better not carry a loaded gun the next time I ran into you, Kincaid. Temptation to use it on you might have been too much. Let's go. Cool. 